All right. I am joined by the ageless Billy Zabka. I don't know what your exact age is at this point. You look almost exactly the same. I don't know how you pulled it off. Um, you are one of the stars of a show that has become my son's favorite show of all time. I was really nervous when it came out um, that they were rebooting it, that they would screw it up, that this would be bad because I love the Karate Kid. I love the franchise. And yet this show is a phenomenon. When it went to Netflix, this show went to another level. I felt like it was beloved, but but just explain what it was like, the shift being on the Netflix page and all the people that streamed into it. Yeah, it was, uh, it's still happening. It was like, you know, surfing a wave and uh, all of a sudden behind it came this, you know, monster tsunami rave. And all of a sudden it's just been, uh, you, you really couldn't see it happening. It was kind of almost like a tsunami in a way, it kind of sucked out. There was this kind of, funny analogy but it was like you know after after we had a break from youtube and we were shopping it around to find a new home there was this kind of downtime when it felt like maybe it's you know is this gonna land somewhere else and then netflix grabbed it which is where we always wanted it to be from the beginning yeah um we were so thrilled just like that i was happy to see you know if it would show up in like the family category or the comedy category or the action category like i was just excited to scroll through netflix and find it somewhere right and uh it came out in it was, you know, and there was season one and two, which had already been yeah. out for a while. So, you know, but they knew what they were doing on that and they grabbed the world, man. And all of a sudden it was, it was, it's overwhelming. It still is. I mean, I'm still seeing how the echoes of the show are reaching all corners of the earth. And um, it's, it's a new stage for sure. Yeah. And you had right after it got, or maybe right before it got released or somewhere around the same time, they had changed the main page to have the trending thing. Yeah. And Cobra Kai was trending for just weeks on end. And <laughs> and uh I think my son's watched it five times from start to finish. She just loves it. And it's and it's a super bingy show. But I think the the part that amazed me and and I really feel like there's a blueprint for how to reboot franchises now. Where normally like, you know, like a good example is the Bad News Bears movie. And they just make it again 30 years later with Billy Bob Thornton. It's basically the same movie. And it's like, well, yeah. why did they do that? Bad News Bears is still a good movie. So right. in the reboot in Karate Kid, which they did with Will Smith's son, you know, they change it. They put it in a foreign country. But it's basically the same premise. Rebooting it this way, but I'm catching up with these characters that I like 35 years ago was kind of genius. Yeah. Did you When yeah. they pitched this to you, what was your reaction? I was... They hit me like like a three-headed dragon, man. They took me to a Mexican restaurant, told me they had a, a pitch for a new show they wanted to meet me with, meet me on. Uh, Josh Heald I worked with on Hot Tub Time Machine. I knew John Horowitz and Hayden Schlossberg from Hilden Kumars. So I knew they were comedy writers. I knew their style. So when they pitched me an idea like we want to talk about a show, I was ready for Harold and Kumar 6 or something like that. And then yeah. we sat down and they just spit-fired Cobra Kai and uh, I, my jaw was on the table. I said, this is fantastic, just the idea of this. I said, but, you know, for this to happen, you have to get a lot of people to sign off. You just can't imagine, you know, booting, rebooting a franchise like this. And then they said, we have everybody, Sony's on board, Overbrook's on board, everybody's signed off. And then it became, started to dawn on me that, wow, this could be real. Yeah. Um, you know, and then I, then I wanted to know, like, wait, then I, the pitch was exactly season one. Imagine season one in five minutes, okay? And you haven't heard anything about Johnny Lawrence or Daniel for all this time. So I was grabbing on to everything I could with what was familiar to me, which was Johnny and Daniel in that story. But then these guys had Miguel and Robbie and Sam and this whole other world that was completely foreign to me. And I couldn't grasp all that. My main thing was what's, wait, what's the tone? You know, Karate Kid's a family movie. It's a beloved family movie. You know, how far does this go off? You know, and um, so, but by the end of it, I said, you know, as long as you don't, what I don't want to do is I don't want to double down on my dickness. Like I don't want to end up being the worst bad guy of all time and take a proverbial crane kick to the face at the end of this thing. Yeah. You know? So everybody hates me for all time. No, you're going to be more of an anti-hero. And then what they said, which really helped me understand the tone, they said, if there was no karate kid, we could call this bad sensei in the same way that bad Santa. And then it clicked in and I kind of got it. So I walked away feeling stirred and hopeful and reluctant a little bit. I think like, you know, all the fans, when they first saw this, it was a little bit like, don't mess with that. And yeah. I had that check in my spirit. I know Ralph did as well. Um, but there was, it was the guys. I love the guys. Their pitch was so solid. They really were so passionate about Karate Kid, so passionate about these characters, passionate about me as a, 
bad guy. They follow me, you know, the just one of the guys in the back to school. Yeah. And, um, you know, and that they wanted to give me a chance to have a little redemption. And all that was super exciting, whether it was, you know, Karate Kid related or not. And so I said, so they said before the half hour was up, they're like, are you in or out? And I said, well, I'm in. What's next? And they said, we got to get Ralph Macchio. And I said, good right. luck. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So that's it. Well, they did a nice job sketching out the kids because obviously my son's 13. So he's going to gravitate to the kids' characters that are near his age. And all of those are really well drawn. But I don't know if you remember this, but I was on Corolla's show. I remember. I know, it must we have did been it mid two, Mid-2000s. Yeah. And you yeah. came on. Yep. And we did a whole thing about Karate Kid. And, you know, it was one of my favorite movies when, when, uh, when I was certainly in high school. And I just feel like it's exceptionally rewatchable. So we had a lot of questions. I think one of the things we talked about was, did Johnny Lawrence get a bad rap in that movie? Like, yeah. Daniel son was kind of an <laughs> yeah. asshole. Like, like, yeah, why yeah. haven't we shifted it? And right. that kind of became a thing on the internet, I think, over the last 15 years. And the show really yeah. tapped into that, where it's like, yeah. eh, are we sure Johnny Lawrence was that much of a villain? Uh, you must have loved that part, though. I did, man. And listen, I, I've been a fan of yours for years. And you kept this, like, when you came out, I don't know what year, was it 2005 with the best sports movies or something? Yeah. Like, you know, you had this platform and, and um, you know, it was in my it was in my peripheral Karate Kid and all this stuff. But that guys like you and Corolla and all these, Patton Oswald, you know, who just kept Johnny Lawrence and the Karate Kid, like, just kept kind of, like, tipping the rock up a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Like, man, it means so much. Like, when they said you wanted, you know, would you want to do Bill? I said, 100%. Because Oh, that's good. Like I, 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 yeah, because, you know, guys like you are the guys that started some of this conversation and, and all that. But yeah, we did. We talked about that on Corolla. And uh, I always felt that way because I always felt that Johnny was, I, you know, listen, to play a character like that, you, you can't go in and think of him as evil. It just doesn't fit with your body, right? So yeah. I went in and I saw the goodness in him. I tried to find his vulnerabilities. I tried to find, okay, at the end of the movie, he hands a trophy. And, and so he's not all bad. He's a little redeemed, creased cheeks to chokes him out. So I, I always felt like, you know, he had a little bit of a redemption at the end. And at, at the beginning of Karate Kid 2, he's choked out of the franchise. Right. And I was at peace with it. So I always felt like, yeah, he was he was tough. Daniel, you know, instigated it. Maybe Johnny overreacted a little. Maybe his training kicked in and he took things too far. But overall, yeah, he wasn't a bad guy. So, you know, for the years that he was, you know, labeled the, the biggest asshole and the worst villain and all those things, I'm like, sure, I was the antagonist, but I never saw him as a pure villain. I saw Crease more as a pure villain. Yeah. So, so that conversation definitely happened. Like people start, I don't know, in the replays over and over again, you know, you start going, wait a second, you know, the magic's wearing off. He'll build Conti's music is the crescendo of the crane kick and the motion of Daniel and Miyagi and all that. But when you scrape it all the way and you see this is a human story, maybe Johnny got a little bit of a bad rap as far as how, you know, how he's been characterized for these three decades, you know? Yeah, there, there's definitely, I, I don't know when it shifted, but I think the the next two Karate Kid movies didn't help the daniel sound case where it's like, this guy's a hero. And then by the time you get to Karate Kid 3, you're kind of hoping he gets his ass kicked. <laughs> so it makes you reconsider the Johnny Lawrence piece of it. But sure. I also think it's a credit to, you know, Russell and I did a rewatchables about Karate Kid on the rewatchables pod, I don't know, six months ago. And we were saying like, the Johnny Lawrence character is just a really good character. You know, you're talking where the 80s where you had these villains and they're always like super cartoonish and completely over the top. And it's like the Ivan Drago era of right. just sneering Russian who has three lines and is taking yeah. steroids and is totally doesn't care if Apollo Creed dies. It's just completely over the top. And yeah. Johnny was a little more nuanced, especially as an 80s character where you have so many different high school movies and the yeah. villain in the high school movie is always just the worst, most unredeeming asshole. Right. They're just always set up to take that, to take the punch. They were there, you know, to, for the hero to conquer. He was yeah. written that way too. I think, you know, Robert Kamen who wrote Karate Kid, I don't know how much he thought about, you know, Johnny handing him the trophy and having good sportsmanship at the end. It reminds me a little bit of Bad Boys with Sean Penn and, uh, um, Oh, that's a classic. And, and, and yeah. Isai Morales. Remember like, I think they kind of became friends at the end or there was a redemptive moment of Isai. And he as doesn't much kill as they him. Were, yeah. He doesn't kill him, you know. It's yeah. like there was a little bit of that somewhere in the script. Um, and uh, so, I I mean, I had to build the whole character on that moment. For me as an actor, as a person, as an 18-year-old kid, you know, reading the script, it was like, you know, he's a badass. He's kicking everybody's butt. He's got karate black belt. 
but nothing I connected to until the end. And I'm like, oh, okay. So at his core, he's maybe not all bad. So, right. so I played that, you know, and uh, yeah, I think there were a little more two dimensional villains that, you know, you just hate to hate. And um, I was just trying to make him human. You know, I just did my thing. And and then, of course, credit all goes to the cutting and John Avildsen and the storytelling. And, you know, Miyagi saves Johnny in a way at the end and all the Cobra Kais. And there's that moment at the end of Karate Kid where, you know, we see Kreese directing Bobby to go sweep his leg. And all right. of a sudden we're having second thoughts. And there was all this kind of angst and stuff. And that kind of happened on the day. I remember, like, when we were filming that stuff, we didn't rehearse all that inner turmoil. We it sort of happened live. We rehearsed those scenes, but we didn't, it, it was happening for us. I remember Rob Garrison who played Tommy came on the set one day and we were both really in the dumps. And he's like, we couldn't figure out why we were so down. We're like, are we down because the show's coming to an end and we're going to Christmas and we're finishing the movie. And he said, he called his acting coach and said, we're all going through some, you know, some kind of sadness right now. You know, is there any, what do you think? He said, um, what are your characters going through right now? And he said, well, you know, we're, realizing our our teacher is teaching wrong kind of thing and he said well yeah. you're living it you're living it so all that stuff that happened at the end and john avildsen had cameras pointed from every direction and it wasn't like they set those shots up to do it was just he was videotaping like live theater of what was happening and then put all that together so you i remember when i did the research for the rewatchables pod i learned a lot of stuff about the movie you know there, it's amazing how much stuff's out there there's been oral histories magazine features all this stuff and you threw yourself into learning karate for like three months and you, and you became really good at it. Then this movie hits, but, and this happens sometimes in the eighties and I can even sense when we talked about it 15 years ago, the character becomes so distinct that as an actor, you're almost like trapped by the character, right? So you go and you do just one of the guys and you do, um, can't buy me love. Uh, no, um, back to school, oh, no, back, back to, to school. school, back to yeah. school. Um, so you do those two. I can't believe I screwed that up. I knew it was back to school. Uh, back to school, I felt like was him in college, basically. Right. Um, but yeah. you do those two, and now you're like typecast as the uh, as the '80s villain. And yeah, but yeah, right. But it was still the '80s, so you don't think that's happening. You know what I mean? Like ten years then on the '90s, I'm like, wait, I'm the '80s villain. You know, in the 2000s, you're really starting to see that. Um, for me, I was just man, I just loved acting. I love being on set. And, you know, all of a sudden, you know, back to school, I almost didn't do. And, and funny enough, just one of the guys I signed on to do just one of the guys. And then day after I signed that, they offered me the bad guy in better off dead. And I was already committed to just one of the guys. And I'm like, man, I want to go skiing with Cusack. That sounds fun. Yeah. But in, instead, I'm in the baking hot Arizona desert playing uh, Greg Tolan, who really wasn't redeemable. I mean, there was nothing I could do for that guy. I just had I to make I always felt like that was dumb. a, yeah, that was like a parody of a Johnny Lawrence character. Uh, yeah. You know, and then I, there was a lot of like karate kid references within the movie. And I complained about that. And I love it. It's a, it's a, it's an 80s, you know, kind of timeless film now to find to look back on and stuff. Wait, hold on. Stuff. I'm going to, I have to interrupt. I think that yeah. worked out better for you just for the IMDb because I think that's a better movie than Better Off Dead from a as 35 years later. I think yeah, it has better sure. legs. That movie is really does. good. It's and it's actually yeah. like kind of shocking that the whole theme of the movie is the the journalism teacher basically doesn't think she could, has what it takes to be a reporter because she's a female. So she has right. to go to another high school as a guy to prove she has the chops. It was like, it's never come out now in 2020. Right, right. Yeah, no, it was, it's a, it, yeah, it was definitely a piece of time there. That was a great, that was fun. I enjoyed doing the movie and it definitely has better legs. Back to school, I was doing the Equalizer in New York and I was working with Edward Woodward and doing some mm. like real kind of drama, you know, Robert Mitchum and all these great classic older thespians that I was, you know, just professionals, you know, older seasoned actors. And I was just learning so much from them and felt like I was kind of getting away from the teen movie thing. Yeah. And while I'm on set, I get an uh, offer for back to school and it's to play the bad guy diver. And I loved everybody that was involved, but I was like, man, this is like the third one. And so I asked Edward Woodward on the set, I said, you know, I just got an offer to do a movie. I played two bad guys and he gave me great advice. He said, you know, there's three reasons you take a movie. He said, either the part's so good, you do it for free. 
Number two, the people are involved are so great. You want to work with them or three, it's the money. He said, if not one of those, don't do it. And it was yeah. more than one of those. So I said, okay, I'm going to go do it. But with, uh, with back to school, I'm like, okay, I just play two tough guys. So what I, for me as an actor, what I have to do is I have to turn this guy and make him, uh, I made him the cowardly lion. I just found he's just gotten, at the end he gets a cramp, you know, I grew my hair yeah. out and had this kind of walk, you know, and, um, and made him try to make him a little funnier and a little more, you know, but they pulled me aside halfway through shooting and said, you know, you're coming off too quirky and funny. Can you be more the the tough guy from Karate Kid? I said, I already did that. So, right. um, you know, but I loved it. I mean, honestly, back to school, if I had to film a movie right now, of anything I've ever done, if I had to be on another set for a day, it would be that. It was such a party. It was exactly the movie in real life. You know, And that was a major, major, major movie. Danger yeah, really Field, you know, because he had had the Caddyshack pedigree and that movie was so beloved in the 80s. And then yeah, I felt yeah. like Back to School was just as successful and in the yeah. time. It was a moment yeah. it had. Yeah, I think so. I think it showed uh, Rodney's best work. I mean, he was great in that. He really carried that whole Did film. he ever roast you during that on the set? No, but here's my first meeting with Rodney in Madison, Wisconsin. Um, I get to the air, I get to the hotel with my suitcases. I roll into an elevator, goes up a floor, a door opens up. Rodney steps on the elevator, hair sticking up in a robe, crusty eyes, you know. And I said, "Hey, Rodney, I'm Billy Zapka. I'm playing Chaz." He goes, "Yeah, yeah, I know who you are. How you doing?" I said, "Good." I said, and I said, "What are you doing in your robe?" He goes, "Oh, I got to get to the sauna. I got to get the pot out of my lungs." <laughs> he goes, "You, you're young. You can handle it." That's how I met Rodney. And then uh, we became friends really on that. We talked a lot in the trailer. I gave him a Christmas card, which I think he thought was charming. You know, I went to his trailer, put a Christmas card in there. And he told me a lot about his life and his family. And uh, the rap party, I'll never forget. You know, he was at the, the head table and I was over with a bunch of the other cast. And he came all the way across the room and tapped my shoulder and said, I just want you to know how much it meant to me that you gave me that Christmas card. Right. And that was really cool. That's so, cool. Yeah, yeah um, it was cool. When did you feel like uh, as you head into the 90s, that the hangover of, of those three characters are just how like casting directors are looking at you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you don't expect that you expect as an actor, you're like, well, they know you're an actor. You can play different things, but you know, listen, it's a business. So they're, they're finding, you know, which actor are people going to have an emotional reaction to? And there's a pre existing one with this guy. So I got a lot of, a lot of different roles. I said no more than I said yes. And I took things that were more creative for me than they were going to be great films, you know? Yeah. They were just things that were fulfilling to me as an artist. Um, but I didn't really realize. I just kind of changed. Listen, The Karate Kid at the same time was gaining more and more steam. It's not like it happened and it lived there. It's like, you know, HBO comes out, cable TV, the internet. And this thing is playing constantly, yeah. gaining new and new fans. And so this kind of shadow of Johnny Lawrence is like growing on my side. And Casting directors had a hard time getting around that. You know, they would say it flat out. You know, like, you're too identifiable as this character. And, and you know, and I always thought this, and I did this music video. I don't know if you ever saw Sweep the Leg. So, oh, yeah. Um, okay, so. Oh, yeah. I, I remember putting stuff in my column about it. I was excited oh, did you do that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that was my first time kind of like meeting this whole thing head on. This band wrote this song sweep the leg and the great guys, the head of the label, great guy, took me out on a boat, played me this song, wanted me to be in the video. I wanted to jump off of the boat into the sharks. I said, no, I'm not jumping around with a headband. But, <laughs> you know, if you give me, if you let me write it, direct it, you know, and have creative control of it, I'll try to get all the guys back and I'll try to do something really special. And they said, go for it. And that's what sweep the leg came together. I wrote it, we shot it. The Cobra guys came, Ralph came in. And then, then hitting the button to upload on YouTube, I think I was like 2007 or something. Um, it just took off. People loved it. It was picked up by news channels talking about this thing. And, and that was the first time that I realized what a fan base there was out there for, mm. there was Cobra Kai knitting cl clubs and volleyball teams and Cobra Kai everywhere. And it was nice, you know, I got to kind of look and so that, but I also kind of felt like, man, the way I'm going to get out of, get to the other side is go through the eye of the needle. Like I got to you know, hit this on the head. And so when Cobra Kai came along, it was like the perfect storm of all that was happening over there and all was happening in my career. And now I get to dive in right to where I started and like turn them inside out. They're writing me incredible stuff to show many colors, layers. And in many ways, he's a completely brand new character because he has 35 years of right. life that's been written for him. He just has the, the history that everybody's familiar with. So it's it's an exciting time with that, you know? Yeah, it's, it's like, it's nice. I, I feel like it all happened this century because I remember 
I got to page two in 2001 on ESPN.com, and maybe within like the f- first nine months, I wrote about the Karate Kid trilogy, and it was just the entire column. It was like 4,000 yeah. words breaking it down, and I got so many emails about it, and people were just like, holy shit, somebody wrote it. Somebody did it, yeah. and, uh, yeah. and yeah. it just, it just kind of kept going. I remember two years later, the OC launched, or one year later, whatever it was. And they had the obvious Johnny Lawrence ripoff character who's like right. starting shit with the new guy. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, this that's is like right. so, so blatantly the Johnny Lawrence thing. It just kind of kept going, kept going. I think the, the thing that I got to say surprised me about Cobra Kai as a show was how good you were in it. And it made me kind of be like, Jesus Christ, like what other stuff could this guy have been in? It actually kind of made me mad because I don't think, A, it's not an easy character. B, you've got to, you've got to basically shift somebody's perception of what the Johnny Lawrence character was from 1984 and by you as kind of this anti-hero, but also somebody that you don't get to see in a TV show a lot. Like his life's not great. He doesn't have a great apartment. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. hasn't really worked out. He's, he's not a great dad. Um, he's, what is he pushing 50 at this point or maybe even a little past yeah. that. And yeah, he just doesn't have a shit together. These are people that aren't normally on, uh, you know, is the lead of a TV show and it right. got pulled off. And then at the same time, they're flipping Machio where I'm kind of like, I don't really like Machio. I feel like I'm gravitated to, to Johnny. It was like a mind trick. Um, yeah. I don't yeah. know how they did that as, as you're reading like the scripts for the first season, are you like, Holy shit. They, this is actually like, they pulled this off. Yeah, it was. Wow, man. It, on paper is one thing. I think, you know, they, they definitely wrote it that way. Um, but it's the way into the universe. Because now here we are in season three going into season four. And like, so that's that was the smart way to to grab everybody and to yeah. grab, you know, and let everybody sync up, you know, and realize, okay, let's take Daniel down a few pegs. He's a little human, maybe a little fallible. He's not the superhero, um, which is fun. And then let's beat the hell out of Johnny and give him a Coors banquet, throw him on the floor. You know, don't even give him a friend. He doesn't even have a fish or a dog. You know, he's, he's trying to make things work. Um, is a great is a great way to come in, you know, because you would think it might even be the other way. Johnny owns a nice car dealership. He's a successful guy. You could have gone that way. And Daniel's still toughing it out in the valley with his mom. And, you know, so it was really the storytelling, the writing on that. I love that. Um, some of the the lines and some of the things I'm like, wow, he's really kind of kind of still tough and a jerk. And I, but, you know, it was about diving into the soul of of Johnny and the heart of him. And then putting the heart into the words coming out of his mouth and the actions coming out of his body and then realizing this is stuff that was programmed from crease way back. And so it was, right. like, it was a great, it was a great acting experiment. Listen, as well, an actor, you want to build up your back path. You want to build your backstory. So much of that was filled in already. And then to just fill on top of that, but how people are responding to it. And, you know, it was a thrill for me to have fans go, wow, we like the character to have people rooting for Johnny Lawrence right now is it's a thrill because for 30 years he, they weren't, you know? But well, the best this, episode yeah. is when I, it's near the end of season one. I thought the, the key episode, which made me think the show was going to have real legs was when him and Daniel actually like hang out and they yeah. go get drunk at the bar and just right. that episode yeah. was just really fun. And it's like, Holy shit, this is kind of like mind blowing. Yeah. I don't know where <laughs> this is going. And <laughs> right. I, it was weird because watching on YouTube, you know, which is where the show premiered, as we discussed before. Like, I, I just wasn't used to watching things on YouTube and yeah. having like it finished and the next one come up. And but you're, it was kind of hard to stream on your TV and to get the app. And I don't, I don't feel like they did a great job in general just with the app. It was sometimes it would restart stuff like that. And then when it got on Netflix, especially when it had the two seasons together. It was mm-hmm. just so easy and so bingeable. Yeah. And you just, they yeah. always had like a little tiny cliffhanger at the end of each one. Because they only did what, 16? 20. 20? Yeah. 10, um, 10 and 10 and 10, yeah. And it just, they fly by. So like I look at somebody like my son, who's just like, I have nothing to watch. I'll just watch Cobra Kai again. <laughs> and yeah. you're banging yeah. it out in like, I don't know how many hours, but. Um, yeah. Well, it's written like a five hour movie carved up into turning points. Yes. You know, and it's so it's really that it's just, you know, it's a page turner and reading the scripts is the same way. You just keep going to the end. It just never ends, you know. Well, but with a couple, coming. couple, couple big ones like Crease well, coming yeah, back. Season, Crease coming back was like, whoa, whoa, what? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All and that, then the man, end of it, season two where 
I, you know, and now I know, I know I don't want to step on season three because I haven't seen it yet, but everybody mm-hmm. listening to this will know it's out and probably at least knows what happens in the, uh, yeah. in the first one. But that was, it's pretty aggressive. Yeah. It's a pretty aggressive, aggressive ending to uh, totally. season two. Season two, we all got that script because we, you know, we didn't know really what was coming. We knew something was going to happen, but when we got that script, the entire cast and even the makeup trailer, the stunt department, it was like someone died in there. It was like, can you believe what's about to happen? Yeah. And, you know, and I was like, like, you know, I'm emotionally invested in Johnny. So like, I felt very proud of the new Cobra Kai Johnny built and here comes crease and, you know, they have a fight, but I don't really know where that's going. I know, you know, and then he starts to betray me and the end of season two, you know, everything that the show was built on is just sucked it and pulled away. You know, Johnny doesn't have Cobra Kai crease is in there. His kids in the hospital, it was a punch in the gut. And if it didn't have a season three, I'm like, if it ends here, this is the worst ending of all time for Johnny. Yeah. So you had no idea if season three was happening. No, we, we didn't know. We Because you two season... basically got out of the content business. And then yeah, you're well, kind of no, keeping they, your fingers crossed at that point. Well, yeah, they, they but they were they they produced season three. So season three was produced by YouTube, but they waited for their analytics and all the whatever they do to figure out if they want to do another one. So we got, I think, a green light on a shooting of season three pretty soon after it aired. And then we went and shot season three. And then Netflix acquired one gotcha. and two and exclusively three. So um and nobody's Netflix. seen three yet. This is why Netflix's stock is like five hundred plus dollars, whatever it is, because they're yeah. smart. They're really? like, hey, yeah, this is Cobra Kai. Do we put this in two hundred countries? Um, yeah. Were you worried? Could you? Did you film this during COVID or before COVID? What was the no, what was the way, schedule? way before uh, season three was completed last November, almost a year ago, over oh. a year ago. So yeah, so we 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 were done November, December, and then went into post production like throughout the year. Um, yeah. So no, we, we, we were, we weren't there for that. Is, uh, is Allie in season three or no? Who? Allie? Allie with an eye. I don't know, man. I haven't seen the season. I hope so, but I can't, you know, we'll have to You don't to want to spoil it for me. All right. All right. I don't want to spoil it for anybody. Well, you know, listen, he, there's a phone on the beach and it was, it mm. appears to okay. be from Allie, but who else mm. has access to her Facebook account? Good cliffhanger. How much has your life changed since since this went on Netflix? Um, yeah, a little bit. It's been a little bit of, you know, I've got kids and the family. The privacy is a little different right now. You know, I'm a little more, you know, people coming up, you know, to me, this and that. Um, but, um, you know, my, my, my life is my family and my friends. So, you know, that's what I focus on. It's great that I'm doing this work and people are responding to it. You can't can't look at it too much, you know, otherwise it'll take you out of it. It's like the natural baseball, you know, like you got to block out the whole stadium. Right, right, right. So, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it's, it's, it's thrilling, but it, you know, uh, I, I keep my, uh, you know, my kids still haven't seen Karate Kid. That's on the list. I know that sounds crazy. How old are my your kids? kids? Ele- 11 and seven. And, um, that's on the, I think that's on the list this week. Like they really want to see Karate Kid. They've been on set of Cobra Kai. They know Ralph and Marty and everything, but, uh, you know, I never, I didn't raise them with to, to see daddy as a, you know, anything other than, you know, ride your bike and throw him a baseball and things like that. So, um, that's you know, so also, funny. Wanna, I showed, I yeah, showed yeah. my kid when he was like five. <laughs> Well, if I was Daniel LaRusso in the movie, I would have showed it to him on, when they were born. <laughs> yeah, fair. <laughs> this is your father. Right. You know? He's a hero. So, <laughs> he's a hero. Yeah, I mean, there was a time when Micah, my son, was, I think, about five or six, and he 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 asked me, uh, we were always playing bad guy and good guy with Legos, and, and the bad guy always went down hard, and he found a picture of me and Ralph in the crane kick stance in my office, and he goes, Dad, what's this? And I'm like, oh, that's from a... Uh, a movie I did a long time ago. And he goes, oh, are you fighting that boy? I said, yeah, I was, I was fighting that boy. And he goes, well, did you win? And I'm like, well, you know, not right. this fight. I go many other ones. But then he Googled uh, the trailer and saw me in a skeleton outfit beating the crap out of some guy in a fence. And that didn't go too well. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm going to wait till you're a little older for this guy. Right. So, anyway. Yeah, you sh- I'm sure once he dives into the whole franchise. He'll be upset about the scoring in the movie. I, I still don't know how Johnny didn't win. It was like punch to the face was legal. Then it wasn't. Yeah. Then yeah. the crane kick is a kick to the face. That's somehow legal. I, I've still never figured it out. That's a long, that's an ongoing debate. The review, the preview, the, uh, yeah, the replay show that was complete. I mean, it could have killed him really, you know, it was a, Totally. Took his neck back. You know, I love that. I mean, it just th- thrusts his neck back and then everybody rushes out and they give him a trophy. I Unbelievable. mean, it's an under 18 karate tournament. That couldn't have been, but hey, it worked with the movie. By the, the way, cool when, about, when, I, yeah. when I did the research on that, 
they filmed an actual karate tournament as you guys were filming the uh, the fights for the movie, which I never realized. They tried to yeah. make it as realistic as possible. So there's like real shit going on, right? That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. There are real karate schools all, in the ra- all around. All those kids sparring when Daniel walks in with Miyagi and checking it out and all the kids fighting, all that was real stuff. Yeah. And then you fought like a couple dudes that were actually like real dudes. Yeah. In, the, fought, in like the prelims. The, all the guys I fought. Yeah, they were all real dudes. And the best of them all was Daryl Vidal, who plays Daryl Vidal. Yeah. The butterfly kicks, you know. That dude, I mean, and he also invented the crane kick, if you don't know who he is. Yeah. You know, he did it in the prosthetics. But, I mean, that guy, I mean, he made me look great. These big butterfly kicks. And I just stood there and threw a round kick. And he he flew midair on his back. Yeah. So, so for the people listening, of, that's the guy Johnny fights in the semis. Yeah. And it is a destruction. It's it's a 3-0 yeah. massacre, but the guy you're massacring was the technical was advisor Lee. for the whole movie. He yeah, was a, yeah he's a, <laughs> he was awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, listen. Congratulations on all this. It's a great show. Thanks. It really is. I really like it, and I, I think it's so cool that it's a show like for people my generation, your generation, that yeah. we can watch with our kids. You know, yeah. I think that's a really hard needle to thread, and somehow Definitely. they did. I think it's gonna be a monster show during the holidays. I, I'm sure yeah. it'll be front and center on Netflix for a couple of weeks there, but congrats yeah. on everything. I'm really Thank happy you. for Thanks, you. Thanks buddy. Thank All you, right. Bill, man. I appreciate it. All right. Good to see you. You too, pal. Next time.